Anything else you want to add to any of this at all? Not unless you have any questions. <laughs> okay. Well, first and foremost, where in, in the story does it take place in this musical? Where is he yeah, physically? We, not physically, but where in terms of the, the... Yeah, it's towards the end of Act One. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so my question would be this. Um, what is it that he's going to be doing now? Um, well, he's, we wanted him to come to the decision within this song that he's going to kill her. Not himself, but he's going to come up with a plan to get rid of her forever. Okay. Because I'm not clear on that. Mm -hmm. The music didn't suggest to me, although it's twisty and it's, you know, got its, you know, creepy quality to it all. Um, you know, I got that this, it's complex and it's dark and, and there's many, many, you know, angles to it all. Um, musically, um, and strange little gr 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 so you're telling me something, but I didn't know the specifics of of that all. Because mm -hmm. uh, he does see, he just says this, um, that's it, I'll show you. And then he goes back into the song, and the key doesn't change at all, so I'm not sure. I was asking about that. Yeah, I, I, I go back into the same plane of music on there. So I don't know what's changed in him in terms of like, again, that journey mm -hmm. that I spoke of. So um, that would be one thing I think I, I would love for you to take a look at. You know, what is that thing? You could, um, if your song, I think we overstay some of our welcome in some places. Because I'm wondering what's happening on the stage when he's going no, 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 over and over and over again. I'm going, okay, you know, it's that watch looking time. You know, I get it, I get it, I get it. So it gets into that maybe performance level thing, and maybe that's cool. I get that. Um, 
but you could do something kind of really interesting. Uh, because what's very interesting information-wise is, and I don't know if my baby's mine. Is that new information for us in the show? Yes. Oh, uh, well, you know, you, you could do something very clever here if you wanted to, uh, where he goes back into the, the, the chorus. Women, where are you going now? Every night you leave with the lady in town. Women, why you gotta go? Sneak into his house. Yeah, as if I didn't know. How can you go there now? And I didn't know my baby's mine. Right? There might be some where you, instead of oh, going to that, absolutely. and then you might have some more power when you do return to it at the end of the song. Yeah, wonderful. You might want to think about that. That might be one way of just kind of, kind of doing that little nip. We expect it to go to that place. Our ear expects it to go to back into that, where you know, no, no, no. But you don't. And then, it, then, then my ear will go, and then my, you know, I'll start, you know, Going, oh, I'll go on the story because now you're telling me something new. Mm -hmm. New information, new information, new information, new information. Always keeps me active, always keeps the, the generator running, always keeps me on a path. The minute that you start, uh, if you're on that path and you start dawdling around, now, 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 <laughs> it's like, you know, okay, yes, okay, go, get, get to something important here. You know, and this is a, this seems to be a very big important moment. This song, this song for this character, right? to me it sounds like it is. And so, so keep that energy going with it all. And you might want to play something. And maybe if you do do some edit in the middle of here, get to that important information. You might discover for yourself as the composer, well, if there is a modulation, but you know that you have so many inner modulations through the whole thing, you may not need it. I think it's a texture thing. I think it could be. Maybe. It could be textural um, with but it I all. I definitely was going to ask you. I think but it should be whatever your textures are, whatever your harmonies are, whatever your rhythms are, you have to know, as always, what you're trying to tell me, the audience, about what he's going to do. Um, sometimes you, we, you can go a cappella and it can be even more scary. You know, sometimes texture and harmonies and rhythms tell me too much, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, the love it's like the rock opera syndrome. It's like, okay, yeah, great, 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 great rhythm. Great four chords. You know, are you gonna do anything differently to tell me something new? Great. You know, so you might want to think about that with it all. Um, so I have, I have a question you know. back to what you were saying about him making this decision, which is not clear in the lyric. And it's not clear, no. Would you suggest, um, a, you know, an additional lyric, a new section or something like that? Or could it be solved with blocking? Is there, like, a better way? You mean, what does he do? He goes and he goes to the, the cabinet and pulls out the gun? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's yeah, kind of Yeah, you a could thing. do that. Oh, my God, yeah, but... Uh, what if your director it, says, I'm going to have him do a somersault help? <laughs> so you know? it's, you think it's preferable to put the decision right there in the words? Um, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there's got to be something better than that's it, I'll show you. Right. There's got to be some cle more clever way of doing that. I think we'll, you want to... mind that. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Are you tired of me or a little that. of both? Broke my heart and your oath. That's it, I'll show you. And then whatever happens after that beat can be, you know, let me let me fill in the blanks. You know, let me do some work as an audience member. You know, you can say, and now I'm gonna get it a go. <laughs> no. you, you could do that, but well, I don't that's, think it's, that's the thing, is yeah. I, you don't have to do that kind of stuff. That's literal and that's you know, that's telling. Yeah. You don't want to tell anything. No, it's not. You know what I mean? You want to show, it's a show. Not to tell. Thank you, Jerry Robbins. You know, uh, you know. So I think that we can avoid doing that, absolutely. And you could do it with stage directions, too, obviously. But it's more or less about what he feels about what that, that moment is. And once you define, I mean, what is it that I'm, I'll show you, I'll sh show you, I'll do something to you, is what he's saying. And um, it's going to end here. Um, so you have to like sort of find what that is musically speaking. Yeah. And you have to find that in some of your play. Lori, 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 Lori. <laughs> You rhyme sometimes, then you don't rhyme sometimes. Why do you do that? <laughs> well, um, would it make you feel better if I fix some of the rhymes just for you? <laughs> you can do anything you want. Again, it's your choice as the lyricist, but the only thing, and I, I, the only note that I would have is like, it's, 
consistency tells me something um, about it. it. In other words, if you do rhyme, and you rhyme correctly, I think this is an interesting rhyme here. Are you tired or mean or a little of both? You broke my heart and your oath. That's a fine rhyme, and it's an unusual rhyme. I'm, you know, my ear goes, oh, interesting. I've never heard both an oath. I, I can't remember when I've heard that. So that's very clever. But then home and stone, and it's just like, oh, you know, it just makes me depressed. <laughs> How do you feel about the now in town? Because um, I thought that's what you were going to... I, I don't know. I, yeah, that's a big issue it. with Manning. What is it? Uh, the Bronx is up and the battery's down. The people ride in a hole in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you got me on now, those, uh, those rhymes there. You know what I mean? If it was good enough for Betty and Adolph and Benny. <laughs> Can I say? Of course, they do like they do write ground in the lyric. It's G R O U N apostrophe. So you know what I mean. They made a choice. You don't do that. No. You know. Well, the thing is that the thing that you would want to be careful of is if you were to hear it in the theater and on stage, whether or not we would we would know that you're seeing the Lady of the Tao. T A T A O. Would your singer make sure that they were singing that end? You know what I mean? These things go into play when you're not properly doing that stuff or uh, paying attention to that stuff. Because you've set me up to hear rhyme. You set me up in the first beat there. You have these inner rhymes in here, right? Um, mm -hmm. uh, baby crying motherless. I can't tell her. I can't begin to guess. Another good rhyme. She rhymed. Perfect, right? But then I'm thinking, oh, maybe that was a mistake on the singer's part that they rhymed town with now. Mm. You know, this whole, that whole thing goes in through my head. Of course, I'm the stupidest theater goer on the planet. <laughs> I am. You know, I'm the dumbest audience member you will ever meet. I just, I am, I'm dumb. I don't know what it is. I'm, you know, I think, of, I think of myself as a pretty smart guy, but I'm dumb when I go to the theater, and I just go, what do they mean by that? You know, I really am, I'm dumb. So, you know, watch for the dummies like me in the dark. <coughs> you know, so it just depends on what the, what the uh, setup and punch is. Be consistent, and then I think that then a lot of things fall into place. Okay. Would be advice. But it's a very, uh, very intriguing uh, little beat there. Very macabre. Where is it set in again? 1905. In Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. I, I got the southern feel in it all. I got the, 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 the darkness of it all. I got the, um, the, what is that called? The, the, the moss, Spanish moth, moss. Yeah. Or in your lyric, Spanish mall. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm actually going to make that a lyric now. I know you will. <laughs> but otherwise, very, very good. I'm very pleased. I wish you the best of luck on this song. How many songs have you written for it all? For this show? Ten-ish? Good. We sort of did a whole good. retumble, so we're not sure that all of them are still going to be in it when we're finished. Well, we're of course, done. yes. It's called rewriting. Right. So, yeah. It's kill yeah, the baby, we've got, so. We've got a... 10 to, 10 to 12 songs. Good. Congratulations. Keep going on and on. I think there's something really quite beautiful in here. So, mm -hmm. really nice. Very good work. Thank you. Thank you. Good. <laughs> We'd like to do something next. Bill. Hello, Bill. Bill and Anna. Go ahead and introduce yourselves to everybody. I am Bill Nelson. This is Anna Kate Jacobs. We wrote a show called Harmony, Kansas. And we picked, we're doing a song that's near the end of the show, so I'm going to give you a little more. Oh, it's another screen. I'm just going to hold it. I'm very sorry. Go ahead, Bill. Harmony, Kansas is about a guy named Heath who's a very conservative gay farmer in a rural community where it pays to blend in. And he's obsessed with earning respect by fulfilling his perfect image of what a farmer is supposed to be. Meanwhile, there's this group of uh, rural gay guys in the community who get together once a week to sing. And his partner, Julian, who's from the city and much more open than Heath, uh, he bargains him to, into joining the group. And Heath ends up discovering a love for making music and a kinship that he didn't expect from uh, with these homosexuals. But when the group considers performing in public, it rocks his world and it threatens everything that matters to him, his idea of the life he's supposed to be living. And he's so thrown out of whack that he ends up telling Julian he should move out and return to the city, which he does. And we'll 
we'll talk about the song. Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, a song for Heath, and it's the penultimate song of the whole show. Um, and we picked the most challenging song for us to write in the whole Good. show. It was a, the show was um, premiered in San Diego in the spring, and this was the one number that we still miss with our heads after we saw it night up tonight. So uh, in this number, uh, the other guys in the group have just told Heath that they're going to go ahead and sing in the festival whether or not he chooses to do it with him. And so he said he won't. Um, and he has essentially separated himself from them. Uh, and we wanted to make it clear in this song that he's struggling with that decision that he's just made. And that somewhere deep inside he wants to be performing with them. But we don't want to reveal too much because the turn where he does decide to perform has to happen for, in our opinion, at the end of the show. Yes. So we're struggling with that. Okay. <laughs> And there's a there's a running thing where the a group of voices sing the song about the land of Kansas. That it's is, the men in the chorus, but they also they they sing as an ensemble. Right, kind of out of the narrative, but it's, and they recur. And so at this point, they're gonna show up. So when we're singing, all three of us, I'm not Keith anymore. I'm ensemble, and then I go back to being Keith. <laughs>
Um, so, uh, when you were explaining the song, Anna, the, you mentioned uh, uh, the the it messed your, your heads. What was what, what was that experience? <laughs> well, you um, heard this live in the theater. It was was it orchestrated or <laughs> is it? Ultimately, it was done with a piano and a double bass. Okay, good. So it was orchestrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what was challenging for us was that um, we were expecting the subtext to read clearer than it was. Uh -huh. And so the moment where he turns at the end, we had to do a lot of really, really heavy rewriting the book around it to make it feel set up because we felt like the song wasn't doing, his song wasn't doing all of the work. Oh. But we also, I mean, the other thing that we struggled with was we wanted to remain true to this character of this man who really is not all that self-aware and we don't feel like he's still reached the point in the show where he's able to come out and say what he really wants. And That's we wanted to save the actual turn for Finn deciding to join the guys in the next scene and the final scene where he does. Okay. Well, you know, always, you know, when you're, the penultimate number stuff is always difficult. Those are very tricky beats, penultimate beats. Um, but do keep in mind, you know, if, you, if you've experienced something with that particular number, it may not be the number in and of itself that you may have had the dilemma with or that was the, the problem child. It could have been the beat before. You know what I mean? How did you set this number up is as important if not more important than the number itself. So did you analyze what happened before? You have to do that, because you, you have to do that, because that may be the thing. People have this misunderstanding that musicals are all about the songs, that, you know, they're really about the transitions. Musical, musicals are all about what goes between the songs. How you get from song to song is what's going to give your songs their import, their, their landing, their, their ability to move your audience, the ability for your audience to go along with the story. You know, without those transitions and those beats that lead into the song and analyzed and looked at and really discovered this is the beat, your songs can suffer an awful lot because of it. And it just takes that, tw it could be a one matter of one line that can suddenly change the entire import of the song and suddenly you've gone from this to that, you know. You never know. Um, in the song itself, though, I, I was curious about something in, in the lyric here. Um, the ensemble comes in singing, right? The Kansas song, right? And then he says, "Ah oh, hell, I want to go join him, go sing the stupid ass song show." Okay. Well, what's the? Where's the surprise in all of that? There's no surprise well, if he's going to say that, right? right? To me, I mean, just hearing that, I go. Oh, he's, he's gonna he's gonna go and join. He wants to. You know, he wants to. But I didn't hear any struggle in there, musically speaking. So I went back to this big anthemy kind of thing, and I didn't hear enough of the the you know the no. You know, there's no no in the anthem. You know, um, uh, the fight in there. No, I can't do this. No, I can't do that. No, I won't. I won't, no, 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 you know. It's it's a, it's an inverse of uh, don't tell me not to live, just say, uh, I won't sing in your gay man's choir. You know. <laughs> no, 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 mama. <laughs> you know, don't, no, no, you know. That's, and you know, you look at the penultimate numbers in some of the great classic musicals, of course, is Rose's Turn, which you want to try to do. Um, here, um, you know, what I mean, that's what you. I think you're you're looking at trying to create here, possibly, because it, it has to be that that soliloquy. Um, so that's that's the dilemma for me. I mean, you say at the top of the song, um, they've got this whole thing wrong. If they cared about me, they'd listen to me and see what they were doing wrong, see what they have to lose. What is what is that in reference to? Can you just tell them that they're all they're going to be called fags and they're going to be left out of town? And okay. Okay, great, cool. Because this is all a verse here, right? Um, this is a, what we call a verse, this verse. Uh, I suppose I should have known, but if it, it had to go and end, why call me the friend? I haven't felt this alone since the day I told my father we'd be vaccinated and they ran away. I miss my family. Things like, I miss my family. 
things like, oh, hell, I want to go join them and sing the stupidism. It's, it, think about this. Are there ways for you to put that into the, the music of that, the yearning of that? The, is, is that something that can be unspoken? Because that, to me, is the song. It, sometimes it's the unspoken things that make the song work for me. Um, my favorite song on the planet probably is, uh, well, my most, one of my most favorite songs would be uh, um, If I Loved You. <laughs> you know, which is all about I love you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just the most brilliant way of going about doing it that just if you hear it, I, I start crying right now. You know what I mean? It's just, it, to me, the, that thing of the thing that's not spoken. So um, we, we will know he misses his family if musically, I hear it when he sings about, since the day I told my father I'd be back soon, you know, and ran away. No, you know what I mean? Again, you know, just that, those, the struggle against what he's feeling emotionally and what he comes to, may, may, maybe something to explore a little bit more deeply in the song. Um, I can be nothing more. It'd be great if if the if there was something to address within the song itself. Of it, it feels generalized to me. The idea of I can be nothing more is a very general statement, and um, I could be nothing more than a man who farms, a man who loves the earth. You have these things in there, but I really need to tie that in more because I'm not sure what it means. I could be nothing more than. I will be the man I'm supposed to be, and I can be nothing more. I like this verse here. A man whose work makes him strong, who doesn't care that the days are long, a man you can depend on, a man who make you proud, whose hands are cut and bleeding, no selfish crap allowed. Got to see this through instead of running the way I did before. I'm not sure what that means. I'm going to take a look at that lyric there. Um, I will be the man I'm supposed to be, and I can be nothing more. I will be the man that I am and nothing more, right? Since he's describing himself as that. So there's some tenses about, some tense things and some conditional phrases that I go, I wish there was a little bit more clarity in all that and less generalization of it all. Because that's really a, a very, very, very good thing, way of making your character not be too self-aware, but totally acknowledging what he is. I'm this, my hands are cut, I work really hard, I can't do that stuff, you know? I can't be any more than that. Um, maybe what you need to do is um, also address in the penultimate song of, um, I don't know if the Kansas song, is there something that he does in the Kansas song and starts joining in on that? And then says, and gets out of that. You know, as opposed to him singing, oh hell, I wanna go join him, go sing the stupid ass song. If you show him wanting to do that, and then no. No, I'm not going to do that. And I think um, his basic fear of joining them is something that you might want to explore too psychologically. What is that? I don't know the whole show, so I don't know the whole um, the whole character or anything or what you what you've set up for the character. But what is the psychology? He, he's not going to join them because he doesn't have fun with them. No, his he's scared of being called a, a, a faggot or something. Yeah, he or? feels that he needs to be. A, a Perfect farmer, and that means masculine and, and non frivolous, like very Midwestern. Uh, but the reason, there's a backstory. The deeper reason, reason is that he, because he ran off from his childhood farm to go be gay, then his family ended up losing their farm, and they all died, and so, like, the legacy <laughs> died with <or> them. <something. laughs> oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> oh, man. I want to hear that musically a little bit more in here or something. I think that that's your, that's your mama, mama, mama moment. You know what I mean? If you want to go that dark with the whole thing, if you, it is a drama, right? Musical drama. Is it or is it just? Or is you it know, it's like a dramatic moment in the context of a like mm -hmm. dramedy that, for the majority of the first act, is like pretty up. So yeah. this is the this is the darkest moment we have in the whole show, and definitely the most dramatic. Song. It seems to me that this is a dramatic mo moment. I mean, there's just no getting around it. So that's why it's, it's a musical drama. Get over it, you know. But you have to find your tone for it all. You know what I mean? If it is campy and it is parody, and then I don't know if there's any room for moments like this because this is a dark thing. This is very, very dark. 
you know, but where is, where is that beat there about what he did to his family? That's what the song is about, to me, or should be about. You want your penultimate thing? It's time for him to look directly in the mirror and go, oh my God, no, 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 no. You know, no, no, no. So, um, but it sounds very intriguing here. What happens at the end? He joins them and gets back with his boyfriend. Sing. They sing the Kansas song. Do they sing the Kansas they sing song? They the, the festival, the, the, the Sunflower Festival. They all sing. Oh, that's okay. Um, <laughs> the Kansas, the, the, this, this, this Kansas land, or the Kansas land? This Kansas land with fields of gold is our home. Room to be who we will be, this is home. Come and stand here in the open where the sun warms you through. And you'll know beauty you've never, never knew before. Okay? <coughs> you know, and, it's, it, and you'll know beauty you've never known before. Never knew. It's a weird, it's weird syntax going on in there, Bill. Um, you, don't, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you'll ne and you'll know beauty as you've never known before is really what you want to say there. And this sounds real clumsy, you know what I mean? Unless that's what you want them to sound like, like it was written by, you know, <laughs> yeah. dummies. Very <laughs> 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 city hits. <laughs> You know what I mean? So that's that's what I mean. Make sure that you're clear about that. Because if it is a homemade song, you can play around with that idea. But you got to be really got to make sure that I know that as an audience member too. That oh, it's a homemade song. You know what I mean? So that I'm not thinking, oh, I didn't quite get that. Or is it because if it is a real Texas anthem or a Kansas anthem, you, it has to really follow within those guidelines of that, which is very strict uh, grammar and all that. So just be aware of that. Um, or you know, put your tizzes and stuff. Depend. When is when was the anthem written? To you. For us or to, for you. Yeah. In your mind, this anthem. When was it written? Um, it's a folk song. But, but when? Turn when? of the century. Turn of the century. Great. Late thirties. Oh, thirties. No, well, it's a. Wait, turn of the century or thirties? <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Always make a decision about I those kind of things. It's a folk song that's been around for a long time, but. The why Great. Decide for yourself <laughs> when that song was written. These moments of pastiche are so important to your scores when you use them well. You know, they're, they're really, really important, but you have to know when and where they were done. You have to get in the mind of the composer that wrote that little pastiche number. You have to pretend, you have to like, sometimes invent the entire biography of the, of the brothers that wrote this swing song. You know, you have to invent the whole biography in your head and live that. Because these past speech moments are always great to use in a score because they, they, they add to the tapestry, they add to the bloodline, they add all these, these wonderful colors to things. But don't just write the, something that sounds like it all. Really go there and, and know. You filter it through yourself, which is what you did, but also know for yourself who wrote this. Who was that composer that wrote this? You know, just have all those things. Make it rich. It just it will add more color. Because I wasn't sure if it was here or there. And I kind of want to know that it is either turn of the century or something. There's no such thing as a timeless thing, per se, because it, there's some always period flavor about things. And if it is a turn of the century song, I really want that color in there. That'd be great to have in there. So but I'm very curious to see how many, and you've done this as a show already, right? Wow, do you have some good singers? This is really high. What was it? The, when you sang it, Anna, is it, is it for tenor? Uh, no, well, I was singing up the octave. Oh. Oh, I don't mean I don't have music in front of me. Because I'm a lady. Oh, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> 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 right. This is, like, you would hear this. Is it written for tenor? Is no, it? it's written for a barry tenor. It goes up to an E flat or an F. Okay. Okay. That's what I was curious about. Because some notes seem really oh, up there. Lord, I thought, I no, 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 not, 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 not in that range, but I was just assuming that it would be a baritone thing, tenor, right? Goes to a tenor? Yeah, I think we usually try to cast a, like a baritone tenor. Okay, great. Great, great. And you have a big chorus in it and stuff and everything? Pardon? You have a big chorus? It's only a seven man yeah. show. Oh, okay. Yeah. Terrific. It's not a chorus, it's like a little singing group. 
Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, this is wonderful. This is very, very good, though. I hope it, what are you going to do next? I'm working on that. Right? Good. I'm working on that. Do you right? I love that you chose the hardest stuff, and that's very important. Today I'm working on a new show, and that's the first thing I went to when I got to the piano, was the hard moment. You know, got my coffee, got my pack of cigarettes, got my vodka. <laughs> <laughs> it's seven o'clock in the morning, I'm ready. <laughs> I do the hard thing first. It's always great. Do the hard thing because cause then like you've done the hard thing. You know, you did the hard thing. And it might suck, but it's like you did it. No. Just gives you that you know, gets you through the rest of the day. That's so good that you did that. I love that you did that. I mean feel good when you said that to me. That's Good, very good guys, very good. Uh, good to see you. Please introduce yourselves to the I, group. No, we will, we will. Hi, hello everyone. So I'm Andrea Lexio, and this is Kevin Ray. Kevin Ray, this Hi, is the Bobby Breakdown, this is the show. Kevin Ray uh, wrote music and lyrics, and uh, Kevin and I wrote the book with Sue Allen Vance, additional story. Um, we actually did the show in Korea, believe Love it or not. Love oh, thank you. I we talk, you we, were there at the same time, actually. We could talk, we could talk, we talk subtitles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> in oh. our hotel, so yeah. that they had come there to go to your workshop. Oh, oh how wonderful. Yeah, so where were you guys staying? In the we were in, in Daegu. Were you in Daegu? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Very far from Seoul. Uh, no, kind of by the river. Yeah. Yeah, we were Not too far from the Yeah. Anyways, we were there. Anyways, so Santa Left Me Breakdown tells the story of two brothers. Bill, a confident tenor sax player, finds easy success in the swing era. It's in the 40s. Um, he finds easy success in the swing era while his talented brother Jim, a bebop composer and innovative alto sax player, struggles for recognition. The evolution of jazz and the rise and fall of the Central Avenue community drive the action of the story. Um, the song comes if, uh, so at the end of Act One. Bill wins work with a big band and heads to New York. Still in LA, Jim gets pulled into the darker side of the jazz scene. The brother's father, William, brings a cop into a drug den trying to save <coughs> Jim. Chaos erupts, fatally injuring William. This song comes early in Act Two at the funeral where devastated Jim eulogizes his father.
the son that's singing to the father that's just been killed, right? Are the uncles still around too? The, the bro brothers? His, 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 his brother's not home. His brother's in New York. They okay, didn't tell so, the so, okay. It's oh. a father and two brothers. So it's Father and, and two brothers. And so, two brothers. okay, great. I was just want to make sure I got the family uh, lineage all down there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the question, and, and this, and this is a musician. This, this guy's a, a jazz musician too, right? He's a yeah. yeah he's yeah. My one question here, and, and it's and it's a good song. Um, uh, Kevin, I felt it was in the country western vein. I wasn't. It, did you feel it, was that intentional that it was sort of like a in a, in a country lament? Uh, uh, Styling. It's not deliberately country. Yeah. I mean, if it has a little bit of that blues in there, a little bit of the country, but it felt very country to me. And I thought, where's this set at? And um, where, where is this taking place? It's set, it takes place in Los Angeles. They are originally well, from Mississippi. Okay. I could, I, well, then maybe that makes sense to me. I just was expecting, I heard jazz. I heard bebop and I heard jazz. I thought it, they're very, no, mm, really. The vast majority of the show is yeah. jazz. So I thought, interesting. This, it'd be interesting to see how this song falls into the panoply of other jazz things. Because it stuck out. I thought, this is like a, one of those, like a, a very, very top 40s, very recognizable, you know, instant, you know, it has good melody, strong melody. But it was in that country vein. I thought, oh, we're in. We're in the fields of Texas or Kansas or wherever we were at in last week. So that would be my one thing. In a bum day, be, 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 be. you know what I mean? That that sort of that's very country, and I thought it was very intriguing that you used that there. Um, you know what I really liked, Andrea? There was one thing here. In uh, these lyrics too. In these, in these. Be careful what you give me credit for. So well, what, what are you doing in it? I'm book. You're just book. Yeah. And who's orchestration? Okay, so yeah. Kevin. So <laughs> the yeah. lyrics here too. Where did you? How did you get the lyrics from? Where did they come from? From the book itself? When you when you adapted the song and to make it into a song? Uh, from from the original concept of the book. So in other words, like um, when they when you got this when you got a script. Well, let me let me interject for just a second. Kevin wrote and created this originally in 2000, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then as we he and I were working on it, we needed a more experienced book writer to come on and help us with the like the foundational scenes. And things. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. But it was originally sung through from beginning to end, wow. uh -huh. and uh, and the family coming from Yazoo, Mississippi, actually comes and sings this very country song called California. Yeah, yeah. Before yeah. Deep digging into this jazz life, but the father is a failed jazz musician uh -huh. and the two brothers one is sort of the voice of swing and one is the voice of Bach. Uh -huh, yeah. This brother is kind of the voice of Bach and he was never able, his, he, his father realized how talented he was and it was very hard for the two mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. because of his failings. Great. I, I, okay, good. I think I'm just asking like a real practical question about for Kevin is like, um, what did you when you when you when you first began writing the songs for it all? What did you, where did, how did you come to write the lyrics from it all? Were the lyrics something that was it like from a script? You saw there was like a monologue and it said, oh, I'm gonna take that moment there and turn no, it into the concept. The concept song. was was uh, the original journey idea was was a, a King and Abel type story. So. Uh -huh. Would but you? practically, when you sat down to write the song, what, how did you do? Just, just well, write the I mean, lyrics first, or practically, I just yeah. I was I was I was stuck. And, so and you I, said I was just like I don't want to say anything at all. Yeah, I, yeah, right, I know, right. Um, so you wrote, but but I think this is a really good moment for a song. I have to say, it's a really great, great moment for a song. No doubt in my mind, you know, this is singing over the, the, the body of your, you know, uh, someone that failed you, and now you're in fear that you're going to fail yourself. I think it's a very interesting dilemma. I think it's definitely worthy of, of a song. You know, those kind of moments are really great to find in the show. You know what I mean? That that, in other words, why is this night more special than any other night? Is your rule of thumb? You know, what makes this night more special? You have to boil it down to the very essence of it all when you're doing songwriting. What makes this moment more important than any other moment? So this is a good, I think, a very strong, important moment in this song. What would be really intriguing for me is if. Um, now, you don't have to do this, um, depending on putting on your feelings about it, but there was something interesting in the lyric where he said um, about the long notes, and I thought, that's really specific, and I like that. The rest of it all had a, a very generalized feeling through it all, and by the time I got to the end of the song, I kind of went, I know, I know, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. Even though there's a journey in here, too, of it all. But the generalization of it all 
I, I, I would encourage you, maybe if there is a rewrite to be done, or maybe with talks with your book writers and whatever, how to put in just those, <coughs> what, what were the, some specific things that this, that this dude remembers about his dad? It smells. When he did this, when he sang that, when he was this, you know, when he did bad, when he did good. So that can all, the, the really specific things. It's not enough to sing about, and I, uh, uh, what does he do? He goes, um, it's a shame you couldn't hear, or I never could find the right notes. I love that. But I was lost in the scene. I was eager and green. I could not understand what the lesson might mean. The one thing I knew, the, the, the really re that really rang true, the one thing that came through was that I never was good enough for you. Okay, that's the end of the first verse. It's tough now. Where do you go from that? Because you just said, boom. But now, we, now you want to try to, now we need to find some sort of exploration. Otherwise, we're going to get ahead of the game. The audience is going to get ahead of the game. And it's going to be one of those moments where at the end of it all, I'll go, I'll applaud you for singing this really well and for it being a really good melody and a, and a good song. But I'm not sure if I've learned anything from it all at the end. And I know you want to do that. So maybe there's some sort of specifics that you could find in that second verse that keeps me on my toes a little bit. More realizations of things, more new information. Um, I see you've got a big section in here. Uh, what was this big section here? Uh, nothing good enough for you. Oh, oh, and the job and your wife and your ordinary life, not the scene that you want to see. Those are some specific things in there that kind of got cut. Hey, if I had another day, I'd play, another, I'd, I'd play the song another way. If I had another night, I'd get the phrasing right. I just need a little time. I really could make it shine. I could show you, Dad, that I'm the son you really want me to be. Um, I just wish there was more specific in there, some colors and stuff in there. You know what I mean? That would really make that melody stronger and more, you know. Otherwise, I'm sitting there going, going okay, stop crying, get on with it all. You know what I mean? You want to make sure that I'm staying there. I couldn't figure out your rhythm in the beginning. What is your rhythm in the, at the top of the song? What is the rhythm in the first verse? I felt like it was like you were in three, uh, almost in 12, eight. Of, of the melody or the piano? Yeah. Like in the first page there, I don't want to say anything at all. Could have been misunderstood. What was the what, what meter were you playing? Were you playing the stick four? four? It felt like there was like a twelve eight going on, but in, in a couple places there, um, with the triplet stuff in there, it was kind of, it was very intriguing. Um, and I thought, oh, they switched the meter there or something a, a little bit here and there. Um, and I had a hard time locking into it all. So again, when I, I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you were here, but um, you know, it's always good to sort of define what the heartbeat is of of this character in this moment and and build on that you know build on that and lock into something and build on that i think you could really gain an awful lot from it all how much have you done this show yet guys or we we were at uh, the new york Music theater festival in 2011 uh -huh. we won five awards there and then we that oh great well why are you coming away when you're in your award winner i think what we learn is it always is going to come back to structure it always comes back to structure. It always comes back to structure. So we want to do whatever we can to. Well, it's hard. I mean, uh, how, how are you willing to do it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's hard. I mean, it's hard when you bring in a whole bunch of new people, and all of a sudden, you know, you've got a whole new book. And are, are you trying to work around the songs that you have? Oh. We're doing. No, we're doing both. Oh, we've, gener we've generated a lot of new songs, and, and oh, good. Uh, yeah, and Kevin's been pretty pretty open. If I say this ain't working. I mean, they work with two really strong ladies there. So <laughs> you know, like, yeah, but it is it is really difficult to uh, you know come in and, and you've got to hold your guns, you know, and stuff. But to, 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 uh, how responsible are you to the songs that are there that you really that everybody likes and stuff? And how do you how do you when you're moving forward and changing the book around? How do you accommodate you know a really good song? We uh, well we ask ourselves uh, specific questions, you know, mm -hmm. in a collaboration and. And we ask ourselves, is this as specific as we can be? Is this a new song or a new This is, this is the oldest, oldest one of the oldest ones. Yeah. And, um, you know, we, we talk about the fundamental reasons why to make the change. You know, we, we have a ton of interest in this show, and we actually, um, we what you nailed us, man, you just, Michael John, you nailed us when you said the audience gets ahead of us. Yes. We have so much good music and so much good going on. And and this is one of our biggest challenges. This and length. Mm -hmm. Well, length. I, I mean already. I mean even the song the song is good, but you have to know when enough is enough. It's like it's making a cake. 
you know, it really is making a cake, you know. And I mean, you know, you, you just, it says to three eggs and you put in five. Uh, not fun enough. You know what I mean? You could just gotta really watch and you really gotta do your measurements right. And I think like also too, it's it's something that you may love something a great deal, you know, and, and it's important to love what it is that you've written and, and cherish it and nurture it and but you also have to know when when's enough enough is enough, you know, when you've got state, it's welcome. And that is really, really important for your audience because you don't want to lose them in too much beauty. Like this song, this moment here, I again say that's very honest. This is a really great moment to music for us. I really like this idea of this moment here. It's, oh, funerals are so great. I love when people die and people get to sing. It's always so great. But also too psychologically for this character, it's a great thing. And I love the message in it. I just love the message. Now I'm not, you know, thanks dad for fucking my life up. And it's you know, just it's a great song. Actually right up against an uh, the whole opening of Act Two is this huge blues number. Sure, it's it's a great idea, and, and it, it's going to be a great contrast to it all. But again, know how long we need to stay in this moment. We may not need to leave, stay in this moment as long as you think we do. Once we get it, you know, once we get it. There was actually you know, a little piece of it that, that I played that was, has already. Been we've been, we've been, we've been, uh, we have been cutting this number. Good. You know, we yeah. constantly talk about that nothing is too precious, but at the same time, Kevin's music has gotten such recognition that we want to also honor that and, and take the best it's of It's lovely to honor one's music. It's lovely to honor one's words. It's lovely to do all that uh, honor and stuff. But the bottom line is it's your show that needs to be honored, you know? You know? What, what the, how are you doing it for? I mean, it's only about the show. The show, the show, the show, the show. You know, I honor you and your music, but I really would love to honor the show. So you just always have to really watch those, those things, you know? It's, it's I, you know, I have the same problems too. I'll tell you, like the giant, which I had to like, trim down from a, a five minute day event into <laughs> two act musical. So and a lot of those babies were killed along the way and you know, um, and people really stuck up and said, but Michael John, it's so beautiful you can't cut and I would go, well, we're, we're, we're going home now guys, you know what I mean? It's, we gotta get this going. And so you have to be really you have to be very much aware of that all and if you if you've got a good heart and a good soul and a good head on your shoulders and a good ego most importantly, a healthy ego, you know the you're going to know that your beautiful music is always going to be beautiful music, no matter in what form it's going to take its place in. And if you can tell the story as much as you can within the music, that's even better. Um, I feel like I got, in this song here, I feel like maybe you could have maybe, I don't even know if I need to go back into the second verse. I'm wondering if I can add two of those really healthy choruses. You know, that verse really, with the wrong note stuff, really landed for me in a really poignant way. You mean yeah. not go back to the, to the final verse of the bridge, or? Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah. I mean, maybe there's something in there, though. You know, how, you know, sometimes when we when we when we condense, we actually have more power in the condensation than we have in the sprawling event of the song. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, I, I find that an awful lot um, in a lot of Euro musicals, um, even like the Mid Lane Miz, which is a great favorite for a lot of people. Um, not for me. Uh, <laughs> you know, because it's just, oh. Do you, find, do you find that it's a balance between condensing and, 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 and also making sure that the song actually works musically? Yes. In those it's, it's, in that's, that's what I was saying about the puzzle work and the, the, the gameplay. You know, to love doing that. And that's, that's the puzzle that one has to figure out all the time. Going, did I just chop off my arm here by cutting this thing here? You know, oh my God, it's walking with one leg now. Oh no, I wrecked it. You, you know that yourself as a composer. You know, but can it do without that extra tail? You know, can it do without the extra finger? You know, maybe, maybe. You know, maybe those are the things, you know, can it do without those extra pounds? You know, those are some of the things that you have to look at when, when you look at it all. And, and you'll know it too in the course of the thing. You know, um, that, oh wait, this has to be the moment. You know, give me a beard, give me a beard. What that song is? Yeah, that goes on for 10 years. And I just go, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, he's gonna be okay. <laughs> he's praying, you have to watch a man pray. And it's like, 
You know, but I'll, but I'm to tell you that audience goes, you know, so who am I? I'm a fool about that. You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Thing, so. Yeah. But I've got 10 minutes. Okay, but thank, <laughs> thank you. Good you. job, guys. Thank you. Good luck with it all. Thank you all. Thank you all. Fellows, thank you all so much for being so brave and so bold and so generous with your gift and your talent. Thank you. about how I could do my job better. It's all you're allowed to do. <laughs> you really, that's <laughs> my job. It's a job. It's not camp. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not, you know, it's, a, it's marriage, but you can't have sex. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's the problem with collaboration. <laughs> You know, it's marriage, but you, you just can't have the makeup sex. So, no, no. You can listen to the suggestions, and if they're good to your ear, then you can make the cuts. But that person should be going through your work and doing it. That's disrespectful to you, and, and don't do that. I haven't made myself clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Just a comment. I'm, I'm Peter. Hi, Peter. Uh, just a comment on the um, uh, perfect rhyme thing. When some sometimes people present me want to write a musical and they'll have the lyrics there and it's like chock full of. I just say, get, get Stephen Soundheim's finishing the half book. In the beginning, he's got that chapter on rhyme. I said, read it, memorize it. Tattoo it to yourself because it, it isn't said any better than that. Yeah, or, well, I think uh, Oscar Hammerstein says it better in his book. Mm -hmm. And Ari Gershwin even says it better than Oscar Hammerstein. Yeah, we'll look that up then. So, yeah, and, uh, and Steve learned everything from those guys. So, yeah. yeah. You know, but it's like, uh, but I would say yes, take a look at those books because yeah. they will tell you in, in wonderful ways yeah. and the joy of doing that and to find the joy in doing that. It does drive one crazy, doesn't it? Home and alone. Yeah. Not <laughs> not do that. <laughs> There's a time in China then. Yes. Uh, you talked about rhyme originally. Could you tell me how you feel as a composer and an audience about uh, phrasing and, and meter? Uh, do you want them to be exactly the meter? The lines have to be the same? Uh, well, you know, I think it all depends, again, on the, the dramatic moment. If I'm in a happy mood and I'm singing about whenever I feel afraid, I hold my head erect, I whistle a happy tune, and no one will stay. I'm going to go, no, that's not, that feels weird. You know what I mean? The heartbeat is up. But, you know, so therefore, it's the situation, the character in the context of the moment that I would pay attention to. Now, if you have a character that's out of her mind, you know what I mean? She's fucking all over the place. Halloween is a good song from a, a, Applause, which I think is actually a very, very inventive song, Charlie Strasberg. And that goes all over the place, and all sorts of time meters. It's like three different time meters in the ball. It's all crazy. That, to me, works, because why? The character's kind of wooing. She's going through the real and some really thing. So that's when, you know, it all depends on, if, if, does that answer your question about the scan, uh, about meter? Yeah. Phrasing's a different thing. Phrasing is a different thing. Um, I like people to honor my phrasing that I've written into my music. Generally, I don't let anybody breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when, uh, when you're picking um, a story or a book for a new piece, advantage of picking like say some something like a Shakespeare theme or something that's uh, doesn't doesn't specify like a certain time as opposed to let's say the story of uh, Mayor Koch uh, and or something very specific you know? well nothing nothing cannot not make a musical I mean you can use you can use any source material anything that's available you can use um, whether it's Shakespeare or it's from uh, ripped from today's headlines, any or a movie script or a poem or you know 
know, some myth. Uh, any, anything and everything, any topic is available to you. There's no rule that says this cannot be a musical. There's no, I don't, I, did anybody come down from the mountain with that etched in the, the granite? No. So anything, go, anything goes. Um, there are advantages to using plays, for instance, because the plays have dialogue and they're already written and may have a soliloquy in them. Shakespeare, of course, is the prototype for, I think, American musicals in a lot of respects because you have those soliloquies and you have those monologues and everything, and those are what songs are essentially are. They're the close up on us, uh, you know, on our on, on the movie Close Up uh, on us. And Shakespeare, you know, his monologues are very much the songs in, in the plays. Um, you can do something very hard, you can always like adapt a poem, but you know, you always have to revert to drama. You have to make sure that whatever you're doing is, is an attempt for drama. Um, and even if it means like taking a movie script, the problem with a lot of movie adaptations that we see when we turn them into Broadway shows is um, movies are done, and I was saying this earlier, to, I think, uh, to, to, that, that um, you know, movie scripts are in three acts generally. And so when people say, I'm going to adapt this as a movie, Beethoven, the dog movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be, but they don't bother taking that three-act format that screenplays in and making it into a two-act form. They don't know how to do that. The mechanics of it are different, so you have to know how to do that. Um, so there are you know, there are specific problems with adapting certain things like a movie, poem. You have more freedom. It can be anything as long as you can turn it into drama. That is where that's where it really um, you really have to find your way into. You have to find a good. Does that, that, that help answer yes, your question? Very much. Thank you. Yes, dear. Um, so you talked about the 32 bar structure. Yes, what um, is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how do you know when to break out of that? Because I, I think I, I was very much brought up in that, and so I struggle with breaking out of that. And how do you know when to or why or how? Again, it all comes from character. It all depends on the moment, what the character's feeling. If if everything's been said that needs to be said, then you know it's 18 bars. You know, if it's you know, if I've written songs that are six bars. They're not really songs, but they're you know, you know, whatever they are. It's, it's done. That beat is done. It depends on what that beat is for you and how to define I don't know if measures are as important to you as they are to this composer or, or, or myself. I don't know what measures mean to you. And struggle, I don't know what struggle is. It's just, you know what I mean? What is that to you? Are, you? are you stuck in a mindset of, I must obey the pop songwriting rules, or I must obey the imaginary rules of you know, musical theater from the 40s and 50s if I'm going to be successful. If you're going to do, if you're going to struggle against that, you know, then, then you're, I, mean, I don't know, if you're, not, you're never going to free yourself from it all. So I'd say go and write as many 32 bar songs as you want, and put them all together and make it into a 148 bar song. You know what I mean? So it's, it depends on what it is that you want to say, the, that the character wants to say, when that character has said enough about whatever he or she's saying, and whether or not musically you, you formed a, a feeling of of, of uh, getting into that character's soul and leaving me with an impression that I know something more about the character and about myself. A couple more here. Okay. Do one more. Okay, thanks. Hi, my name's Ed. Hi, Ed. Hi. Let's say I have the germ of an idea. I'm a librettist lyricist. I'm working with the composer. Now I have the germ, and I'm working on a treatment, and then I'm going to be working on the libretto. To what extent, and depending on what circumstances, would you involve the composer like in the treatment and in going forward in the libretto itself? Well, I, I'd wait till I felt it was time. It's always a very nerve-wracking thing when it's time to turn over work. You know what I mean? You always get nervous. You go, mm, you know, if the composer's chomping on the bed, give me material, give me material, take a look at your contract. If it's a commercial contract, then you have like you're supposed to look on a certain date or something. But if it's not, you know, you, to, you have to say, I'm not ready, quite ready for to share this quite yet. Or if you really love your composer or your collaborators, you go, oh my God, I really use the inspiration here. Take a look at this. Tell me what you think about this. Then it's, then it's time. You don't have to do the whole thing. You can do it in sections. Uh, I would say whatever you need to do, though, you have to dive in and do it. You know, there is 
no right or wrong, and you have to and you have to know that uh, you yourself are strong enough to, to take whatever criticism is going to come your way um, and be ready for that. Uh, you know, but I don't think you're going to get that if you and your collaborator and forge a good, respectful relationship with each other. But it's not judgmental. And that's the time when you can turn over your work to a collaborator or a composer. Or if you're looking for a composer, um, I would have enough material uh, from what you have to finish the whole thing. There's nothing scarier to a composer you know, then when someone comes in with the box. I've written my new music, you can be interested in setting it to music. Uh, we're, 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 well, well, we're working on that together, maybe? You know, it's like, you know, it's some, there's something scary about that. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to finish the whole thing. Do some, uh, what you think is really representative, what you love, you, like the kids did over here. They went to the hardest song that they decided to do, the hardest part in the <coughs> germ of your idea, which you think, go to that one, write that one out. Finesse it, make it great. You never know, maybe another scene will spring out of your, you know, out of the head, you know, for it. And, and come up with a bunch of that material. And then, then you'll be ready to either give it to your collaborator or, or, or you know, find a composer with an interest in working on. I think I don't have to be I very sorry.